Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Saturday, July 2nd. By the way, we will be out on Monday, July 4th for Independence Day. Moving on. Tesla is offering free supercharging during off-peak hours at select locations on the 4th of July weekend to help with traffic during busy travel days. The offer is valid through Monday, but interestingly, Tesla decided to only apply it to a few stations in five states in the U.S. The two areas are Southern California and a few around Dallas, Houston, and Austin, Texas. Presumably, Tesla expects those stations to be the busiest this weekend, and the incentive should help to lower traffic during the day. Supercharger costs at those locations can go up to $0.58 cents per kilowatt hour, so free supercharging could be around $20 to $100 depending on the length of the road trip. Tesla has filed with the city of Austin to expand Gigafactory Texas. The current building is the equivalent of about 15 city blocks and 4 million square feet of space. But nonetheless, this week Tesla filed with the building permit to expand on the land and another extremely large building. The permit requests plumbing for an additional 500,000 square feet. It's not clear if it would be an increase to the production of the Model Ys currently being built, or if Tesla plans to use the space to build new models that are going to be coming next year, such as the Cybertruck and Tesla Semi. Then again, it could also be for additional production of the 4680 battery cell, a constraint that many in Tesla leadership have mentioned. While these are definitely pragmatic speculations, there's also the option that Elon Musk will allocate more resources, including additional space, for the Tesla robot. The boring company's Las Vegas loop with Tesla vehicles traveling inside has now connected its first resort on the Strip. This marks the beginning of the citywide loop. While the ambition is to have a complex tunnel system underneath entire cities, the Las Vegas Convention Center loop is only one and a half miles long and three stops. Before the citywide project was approved, Resort World Las Vegas, one of the newest resorts on the Strip, already contacted the Boring Company to build a loop system to connect them to the convention center. Today, the resort and Boring Company officially launched that new section. The eventual goal is to have autonomous shuttles zipping in large underground caverns with many more shuttles buzzing about, with elevators to take entire vehicles to and from the surface. I actually had the chance to ride the loop earlier this year, and it wasn't all that impressive in its current infant state. Right now, people are driving regular Tesla cars through narrow one-way tunnels and then driving up a ramp up to the surface. Still, you gotta start somewhere. Ardent electric vehicle opponent Toyota Motors has sold its 200,000th plug-in car in the U.S. This means that Toyota's access to the $7,500 federal tax credit for customers will conclude over the course of the next 15 months. This may come as a surprise to many since Toyota still hasn't reached large-scale EV deliveries at all, really. Toyota had a short-lived RAV4 EV program in the early 2010s, but that only accounted for about 2,500 units. And recently, Toyota has finally started shipping its first battery electric vehicle on scale, the Toyota BZ4X. However, since it just began, that's only a couple thousand so far. So where did the other 195,500 go? Well, the tax credit applies to plug-in vehicles with more than 5 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage. To give you a sense of scale, that's about double the capacity of a typical golf cart. It just so happens that many U.S. market Toyota hybrids were barely above the threshold for applying for the credit. These 5 kilowatt hour hybrids have used up the allotted credits for Toyota. What's rather unfortunate is that the credit doesn't give the full $7,500 for each vehicle, but instead gives $500 per kilowatt hour until it caps out. This means that many Toyota hybrid customers received one-third of the tax credit's full capability. While this seems like a critical mismanagement of opportunities, it is possible that Toyota may gain access to an EV tax credit in the future, since U.S. Congress is currently debating a bill. In an opinion piece by Electrex editor-in-chief Seth Weintraub, he asks this, when does an internal combustion engine car become valueless? He answers it by saying, when the cost of buying or leasing an electric vehicle, along with paying for maintenance and miles, becomes less expensive than using a free gas car. The article was sparked by a story in Bloomberg, which laid out the financial details of an Uber driver who switched from a Toyota Camry to a Tesla Model 3. The results were huge savings and a great deal of additional comforts. 
Weintraub goes on to write, quote, With the gas prices at $5 and not budging at least for the summer, more and more people are flocking to EVs. But after many years of automaker excuses claiming there was no demand for EVs, now no automaker can make enough EVs to meet demand. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Martin Wood says, quote, Over 200 miles per hour in a Model S Plaid is impressive. Maybe we'll see it at the Bonneville Salt Flats next week. You know what, Martin? Maybe we will. The scary part about that is that the vehicle has to stop over a very great length, and that would scare me to death. The idea of having to stop before crashing and easing the brake paddle oh so carefully to not cause the whole entire thing to flip and crash. Uh, it's pretty much guessing how much space you have left as far as I know how to use it. And it's not my idea of a good time. I'm not much of a thrill seeker. I'll leave that to someone else to nab all the glory and I'll be there cheering them on. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. As a reminder, we'll be out on Monday. I'm Mikey G and I hope you have a great day.